Hi, this is Gizditch, and I will be teaching you on how to make a table that consists of rows and columns for your program. So that means that we have to use the JTable in order to make the table for our program. So far, I imported uh, the JFrame in the JPanel library. This class extended the JPanel, so that means that this whole class is considered as a JPanel. I made a blank constructor, I made a main method, and I also made the JFrame for the program. I added the panel, the J panel, onto the frame. If you have everything like I have, then let's begin. First thing first is to make the J table object. So type in J table variable and, and a semicolon. Make sure that you import the J table so we can use the J table to make our table. After this, then let's continue on into the constructor. Now we have to work on the columns of the uh, of the table. I want this table to have three columns. So in order to make the three columns, we have to make a string array. So string close brackets, square brackets, and name this array columns and set it equal to the curly braces and the semicolon. Like I said, I want this table to have three columns. So that means that we have to type in three values for this string array. So for the first column, Let's name it as name. The second column, let's name it as uh, age. The, the last one, let's call it as gender. Now we have the three columns. Now let's make the rows. This time we have to make the two dimensional array. So string, two pairs of closed brackets, and name, name it as data, and set it equal to the two curly braces and, and a semicolon. The reason why we use a two-dimensional array for this is because that each value of this array will have an array itself inside of this array. So for the first value we have to make the two uh, the two curly brace again and we have to make the values for each uh, yeah for each one inside of the inside array that correspond with the uh, column. So the first one the first value inside of this array under, underneath name, type in John, my name, age, let's say 18, gender, male. And that's it for the first value. For the second value, make sure that you have another array for the second value. And let's type in uh, Daisy for the name underneath the column of name, Daisy. Uh, let's say age 19, and the gender will be female. Oops, female. Okay. The next one. Let's name it uh, Dave. Um, 
let's say 23 oops 23 in male and the last one let's make let's make four rows yeah we're making four rows and the last one let's name it as Jake Jake uh, age 30 and male and we're done with the two-dimensional array we have this curly brace closing with this one and we have this curly brace uh, closed with this one and so on so yes now we have the column yeah we have the columns in the rows we have four rows and three columns so now we have to use the variable from here JT and set it equal to new J table open and close parentheses and the semicolon inside we use the row first we type in the row first which is data so type in data and the last one is columns now we have our table yeah we're done with this object and now we set the size of the window so set so JT dot uh, set preferred scrollable viewport size inside of this parentheses new dimension open and close parentheses and a semicolon make sure that you import the, the dimension library so we can set the size of this table okay. just pretend that this right here the set preferred scrollable viewport size pretend that it says set size instead so this parentheses right here takes two arguments the first argument takes the width of the table and uh, um, the last argument takes the size of the height so let's do 450 by 63 and after this then we had to set the visibility to true so JT dot uh, set fills viewport equals to true set fills viewport height is like the same thing as saying set visible true so you know, just pretend that this right here says set visible true but you gotta uh, memorize this one though this line and this line too in order to construct the table all right well now after this then we have to make another object which is the J scroll pane and variable equals new J scroll pane and you type the you type JT inside of this parentheses the reason why we made this object is because that not always our table can show all of our rows if the table can't show all of our rows then it will have a, uh, a scroll bar so that's why we added the scroll bar onto the table so we have to use this and add it onto the J panel so add JPS semicolon and now let's see what our program looks like now we have a table four rows and three columns and we got a scroll bar here you can edit the information too like you can change it to uh, J 
and you can also flip the columns to different places. If you don't want your table to be editable like this, changing the information, then you simply make this, yeah, you make this as a class basically. You have the curly braid, yeah, this can be at like a class and you can have methods in here too. In order to uh, to prevent the users to edit the table, we have to make a method, which is the public boolean is cell editable. And type in int data and int column columns I mean yeah and this right here has to return false since this is a boolean method and make sure that you have a semicolon after this curly brace right here so this object is treated like a class So now let's run it and see if we can edit this. Nope, we can't edit it. All right, well now there's one more thing that I gotta teach you. What if I want to add a shading to each row, like a pattern, like this one here is white and this is like light gray, white, light gray, and so on. Well. I'll show you how to do that now. In order to do that, you have to make another method inside of this JTable kind of class but with a curly brace. Inside, you have to make uh, a method which is public component. Hold on, it's got to be cap. Component. Uh, prepare render or and ha have open close parentheses and yeah curly braces and make sure that you import the component library so you can use this method all right well now for the first argument you type in an object which is table uh, cell render er, and let's name it as r the variable int data and int And make sure that you import this table cell uh, renderer. Now we have that. And this, we have to use the um, an object which is component. Make a variable c equals uh, set it equal to super prepare render renderer and yeah the r cuz we got the r here and we have to we have to type the r in here too and data from here and columns from here so yes this is a built-in method that came from the library so that's why we have super and we set this right here equals to C right here. So the C has the value. And make sure that you have the semicolon. And uh, now we have to type in an if else statement. So type in if uh, data is uh, modulus 2, then set it equals to 0. Like if that ever happens, 
Then, hold on, hold on. Then you set the background color to white. And I'll explain what data modulus 2 mean after I get done typing this. Color dot white. All right, well now the color is good. All right, let me explain what modulus does. This right here is basically like dividing. If you have a remainder, then it'll output the remainder onto the screen. And like if the remainder is zero, then the row will, will be white. So the data, the first one, is considered as zero. The second one is considered as one, two, and three. So um, zero divided by two would be zero and has no remainder. Remainder. So therefore, this first row will be white. And for the second one, um, one divided by two equals half, meaning that there's a remainder of one. So this right here won't be white, the second row. And the third one will be white because uh, 2 divided by 2 is uh, 1, and there's no remainder. So white and gray. So this is how we uh, tell Java to have a pattern of rows, to have a color, and not to have a color. And for the else, we set the background C dot set background to uh, gray, light gray. So yeah, we use the component C and we set the color of the component C. And yeah, make sure that you return C also. Return C and semicolon. And now let's see what it looks like. Now we have a good looking table. But, like, I want to have one more feature. When I click on some row, I want it to light up to a different color. And once I click away from it, then it'll go back to normal. So, Let's make another if statement. So type in if is cell selected and have your data and your columns. Uh, yeah, make sure you have your data and columns inside of this parentheses from this argument of this method. And you set the background color to any color you want, basically. So I'll set mine to green. So yeah, if I selected a row, then it'll highlight green. And I'll show you right now. So this is our table. I click, it's green. Cool, huh?